How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood medical student, and today I'm going to be talking about my experience and life lessons that I learned when I spent one month in one of the busiest trauma centers in the world and the United States really, uh, Grady Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, I'm a medical student, currently a fourth year medical student in my last year, and I talk a lot about uh, giving access to people like you, uh, on understanding your own health, but also I talk a lot about some of the life lessons I learned through medicine and other parts of my life in general. And uh, I haven't had the time to make this video really, and I've been wanting to for a while. It's been about six months since I spent that month um, in the trauma bay at Grady. And I think um, this is a great time to talk about some of the things I've learned, and I've had the time to process those feelings that I've had. Uh, since being there because you know there there's people made for different careers and I'm a really touchy-feely guy I put a lot of meaning behind every single interaction I have with people and you know I I wanted to make this video because I am not going to be a trauma surgeon nor will I be in uh, trauma service ever again um, out of my own volition because um, you know it's just not my a job setting but I did learn a lot of amazing things and I've met a lot of amazing people while I was there so to start off talking about my experience in in trauma is that um, trauma was one of the first times I actually like I've seen people die before uh, when I was in high school I was actually um, a guide some a guide in a nursing home that helped people pass on from this life to the next life I was an 11th hour vigil um, person so I help patients uh, have the last moments of comfort while they're here in this world so death is not something that's uh, new, uh, new to me uh, I, I've, been, I've seen death before but um, in trauma you know uh, a lot of the deaths that we do see are very very tragic incidents and not only do we get to see uh, the, the patient's final moments uh, but we also get to see the aftermath when the family comes in uh, worried about their loved one. And it was in these moments where I learned to really, really, really appreciate life. But also uh, I reflected on my own life a lot when I uh, saw these really, really, really tragic cases. Because at the end of the day, I can't really sugarcoat a lot of the deaths I had seen in trauma. Um, I'm the kind of uh, physician, future physician, that always likes to see the good in things. Like, if there's bad news, I will try to find at least a little bit of good news when I, you know, disclose something to a patient. But with the trauma, you can't really do that. So it humbled me a little bit that sometimes good things are not really going to happen. There's going to be just the bad outcome. And where do we go from there? So trauma really helped me understand that sometimes we just need to deal with the bad and we need to be there for the people that are going through the bad and that doesn't always mean you know being optimistic sometimes you just have to hold someone's hand give them a hug offer them coffee offer them a drink while they're waiting on their loved one and then i saw the way that the other providers um, talk to the patient when they're wheeled into a trauma bay uh, more often than not uh, patients are not always completely unconscious. We have trauma patients coming in all the time with full ability to speak to you, to tell you how they're feeling, to tell, they're telling you how much they're hurting inside. And I saw like this team of nurses and doctors, you know, rushing to the scene because it's not calm. The trauma bay always has things going on. Uh, there's about 41 bays where I practiced in and every 30 minutes someone was getting wheeled to a bay and every time someone gets wheeled in especially when it's a level one or level two trauma case everybody in that bay is rushing to that unit to save that patient's life but even when there's about 20 people in a room scrambling to keep this person alive to scrambling to make sure this person has a chance at life again and I see so much compassion in the nurses. Um, there's one nurse that always tells the patient that, hey, um, I'm going to stick a needle in you so that we can give you fluid. It's going to hurt. And she always says it, always, even if the patient is not completely there. 
just to make sure that you know she acknowledges the humanity in the patient even if it's a high risk case like that because sometimes there's just so much going on people get overwhelmed people start to forget that there's other people nearby but these trauma nurses just had so much compassion and so much respect for the people that for the people that are being wheeled in there and i've met a lot of really 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 compassionate trauma surgeons as well um usually whenever there's a level one trauma case there will always be a trauma surgeon in the room before the patient is even wheeled into the or for emergency surgery and so many of these trauma surgeons um had so much patience and there was this one one surgeon he would always be like we're gonna take care of you buddy um whenever a patient asked you know am i going to be okay and you know those are some of those key lessons that i've learned as a medical student that i'm going to take with me for the rest of my life even if i'm not never going to work in a trauma bay ever again and the fact that these doctors and these nurses and um even the radiology techs some of the worst trauma cases we see are late at night, 3, 2, 3 a.m. And some of these doctors during their shift live at the hospital. Uh, I remember one doctor, he had come in during a case and I could see that his hair was all over the place. And that's because he was sleeping uh, in the trauma restroom. But as soon as a, a case got activated, he was out of his feet and running out the door uh, to help this patient. But even with all those positives, I actually did experience some negatives. Um, you know, experiencing a death, seeing a death is never easy. I still remember every single um, death that I've seen in the trauma bay. I still remember deaths that I've seen in the hospital. I will never ever forget any of the patients that have passed. Many of these patients, I'll not never forget their face. You know, and there's still days six months later a year later where i still see their faces in my dreams or something happens that reminds me of them because i get to meet their families i get to know about their hobbies i get to know if they grew up in georgia or they moved here how many kids they have what their kids are doing i get to know these patients like their family and it's hard you know, there's absolutely no way you can ever move on from knowing people that intimately. But even with, you know, remembering these faces, I know that they've left an impact on me and parts of them will live on through me. You know, I've learned a lot from these patients too. And it's allowed me to appreciate all the relationships that I have in my life and the friends that I have because a lot of these trauma cases the person didn't even expect something like that to happen to them on that specific day and I don't know when my time is and I don't know when my loved one's time is and it's allowed me to appreciate every single moment that I have with someone that I love someone that I care about and to treat strangers with dignity and respect because we don't know what they're going to go through either and I feel like I've had a lot less of a tolerance for people who take me for granted now since I've um, done my course in the trauma bay but I've also learned to appreciate every single moment that I have with someone who gives me the respect that I deserve as a human being and as a person it's allowed me to you know, be more choosy with the people that I share my joy and happiness with, which everyone should do. We should always be around people that, you know, validate us and make us feel good and never makes us feel bad just so they want to make us feel bad. Um, so at the end of the day, I learned a lot from my one month in uh, one of the busiest hospitals in as far as trauma goes in the United States. Um, I will never forget this one month experience and um, it's been a joy to work with the team of folks that I did work with when I was there. And I'm forever grateful for them and I'm forever grateful for those patients that have let me take care of them and their families who've practiced a lot of patience with me and you know was vulnerable with me. Anyways, that's it for uh, this video. I hope um, you 
got to experience a little bit of my life and what I've been through in the last six months. And I hope you gain some of those insights that I've gained, at least through me explaining what I've learned, you know, through this experience. Because uh, I'd say 99% of the world, not even most med students or medical doctors will ever have to experience or see something like this. It's definitely been an, it's definitely been an eye-opening and lifelong um, experience for me. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope that you'll share it with someone who will also get something out of it. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter uh, to keep up with my daily life and some of the advocacy work that I do. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. This is Ben.